back to the channel and the Rupert's restoration. Well, look at him now in his new coat of paint. He's unrecognisable. Wow, well, did we do with the painting? Absolutely blown away, if I'm honest. And I never expected to get a finish as good as we've got. Really, really happy. Uh, I've, I've continued to be busy. It's a week later now since we've done the painting. Let it go hard for three or four days. And then we've addressed some of the runs and all of the... Uh, orange peel on the frame and as you can see it looks absolutely fantastic I've not done from this seam to underneath we're going to wait until the engine's on and the forks on so that I can get it a bit high and I've got more room underneath for the polishing but yeah I'm really really happy as you can see we uh, we, we took that little run off the nose of the saddle there We've got this little bit, bit of a drip that we sliced off and we've blended that in, it was just under there. And I've got this little ripple just near the front indicator, which we're going to flat off today and get that cut back. That's pretty much as far as I can go with the frame. I've got to put the bearings in next and get the steering tube and the engine on, but more of that later on. So how have we dressed these problems? Um, oh, got a colour change, haven't we, to tell you about yet? Well, you think that when I was doing the mug guard and traffic purple was not the purple that I imagined. It was more Barney the Dinosaur purple. And as it, I put it on anyway, and I thought, it yeah, might go darker as it dries, as it dried. If anything, it went lighter. And I don't want to end up looking like Katie Price's Range Rover. That was not the look I was going for. So we uh, had a conference with the design team, AKA the wife and she has picked this beautiful wine red and all of those pink parts well i say pink purple they've all been scuffed back down take all the glaze off them and they've been redone for the polishing for no other reason than it gets good result re reviews online i went with the Maguire's range it was not too expensive i didn't think it's a compound cutting compound yeah so how do we get rid of all this orange peel well this piece here this was one of the plastics do it the same way as the frame but i just wanted to try a bit on an inconspicuous area because when with it being plastic the heat from the polishing might affect it so i wanted to have a go so this area here is not seen it's covered by a mat the rubber mat as you know uh, so what i did i masked all this off and i separated it with a piece of tape and I've done one side and that looks great and you can see the line where i've left the other side so the improvement is vast how do we get there uh it's pretty much it's just more rubbing down uh wet starting with a thousand paper um going up to 1500 2000 and then 2500 really really fine papers and then get the uh, the compound on, on the polisher and it'll polish all the microscopic scratches out and leave a great finish so we've got to do all of that to the plastics a couple of tiny little pieces to touch up you see here this was our problematic panel there's a little some fish eyes here you can see these little tiny like a spot of grease or oil and the paint has not uh, settled over the panel there it's separated eye and left these little holes that's what fish iron is i've also got one on the side wing and there's only one and it, i've polished some of it out and it's nearly gone but what we're going to do is use some of the original paint and just touch a blob over each of those holes um, accelerator I'll probably maybe just put 10% in I'm only talking about a thimble full anyway of paint in total it's all I'm going to mix up and then just a little dab on and then those little dabs and I say I've got one on the wing I'm going to leave it three or four days wait till it's gone half and then slowly start rubbing it down and then polish it and hopefully we won't even notice so let you you know our work let's get a tune on and get some of these plastics polished
And I hope you're unusual Very unusual Now I'm at your door Modification wise on the scooter, it really is pretty much standard. Uh, these are the old shock absorbers, though, and you can see they're pretty knackered, very worn. And all of the S series Vespa scooters, the standard springs are in this red powder coating, and that's not really the look that I'm going for. So I've had to find alternatives, and this is my real one. Actually, I don't want them red uh, let's get them the right way around but this is an adjustable one from RMM it should fit yeah I think it, it should fit well, a bit more substantial springage wise we've got an adjusting step here so that's my back one it's nice keeping it black and then the front one was uh, I took some tracking down the front shot really did but I did manage to find this one they were very expensive I could have got the genuine Piaggio S series ones for less than these cost me but like I said I don't want the red so this one's come from uh, YSS and it's very very slightly different when you look at the fixings here I've got a uh, the, the captive nut and the threads actually on there so the bolt just goes in and it threads in there and they don't have that on this one so I'm going to get a nylon nuts on the back of them again it's adjustable and uh, in black and silver yeah it looks okay we're going to have to have a look and make sure that we can get these fitted properly when we come to it but yeah there's the front suspension and the back suspension they're quite nice them aren't they if it fits okay I'll uh, sneak in there with a little bit of heat and peel that sticker off because we don't want any red do we like I said modification is very very minimal I'm trying to keep it standard the shocks we've had to change uh, what else have we changed on the reed block just under the carburetor there there was some security bolts holding that on like a spline with a little pip in the center you need a special bit so they've been changed just to standard hex head bolts just make things easier for the few future uh, these are stainless steel mushroom headed uh, I think it's a six mil or five mil allen key and all of those are now on the variator cover on the originals well half of them were missing when I first got Rupert but um, yeah there was a, a mixture of screws and bolt bolts shall we say so yeah they're nice they're gonna make it much easier can take them out with a screwdriver and the only other modification well this is the light switch and the default position is you start the scooter up and the lights come on and the only option you've got is to change to high beam that's it 
high beam or back to low beam but they're permanently on your lights are all the time that is the only option you've got so we've got this got it from sip in germany and this is uh, it's got some electricery inside there and that gives me an off position so i can have the lights off all the time keep the battery charged up during the day there's no point in uh, having lights on really unless you need to and it's got the high beam position low beam position and then that p what does that mean i don't know park maybe but anyway you press it and it will flash the lights so that can make it a little bit better for the modern roads i think so that's a light switch modification but that is all that we've done really not very much at all keeping it pretty standard right then we better get uh, get cracking aren't we there's rupert's birth certificate got a birth marker as well this is where the frame number is that was rubbed back to bare metal when we did the painting and we had a piece of tape over it and then when we did the very last coat we just pulled it off let's just get some paint on there it should have gone inside the stamping i'm going to very lightly rub it back now so we can read the frame number because the frame number and the engine number match my v5 so the very important uh lots of these documents but there it is red and yellow the time has come to send this away to swansea and in there the new color all right let's carry on let's get that, uh, that frame number knocked back and then i'm thinking some clear nail varnish over the top of it to stop it rusting Oh, it looks right well, it's a few days later now and all of those plastics polished up lovely even the little touch-ups that we did with the original paint a little tiny brush just dotting over those fish eyes it's all been flattened down and compounded it all polished up lovely can't even tell so i've just been looking at my documents and uh, the mot runs out in five days well it's not a problem because i'm expecting uh it to get a new mot easy enough however what i did need to do was get the bike assembled, get it on the road and have a couple of days of riding around on it just to see if there's any issues or a bit of a snagging list that I might have to deal with before it goes for that MOT. Once it goes to, I, I can book it in for an MOT once it's expired and ride it to the station, but that's all I'm allowed to do. So I'm not going to get any road time. So it means we've got to move these projects on. So I've got five days, want a couple of days on the road. It's going to give me three days. I've got to assemble the complete bike, and get it on the road in three days. It should be easy enough, it's only putting stuff back together and we've got every single part and everything is all furbished. So what? Or how, how are we going to attack it? Well, I've been thinking about it. Um, I've had to watch episode one backwards, see how I disassembled it again. But we're going to get the frame out tomorrow. I'm going to cover what I can with bubble wrap so that you know, minimise the risk of scratching. Uh, the oil tank needs to go in, the fuel tank needs to go in, the wiring loom needs to go in. Then the engine can go in once the engine's in the bike can then sit on its um, on its center stand i've got to put the bearings in the front steering tube and get the uh, steering tube assembled with the shock absorber what have you uh, and that can go back into the frame and then once that's on the put the annual bars on and then we'll be able to move the bike around on its two wheels to stop preparing the engine I need to get the variator cover off uh, so that I can get to the oil pump. So I'll just quickly take that off. So the reason I pull off the variator cover off, it's going to have to stay on until the engine is on and it's all connected up. But I've uh, replaced the pipes off the oil pump, as you've seen, and refurbished the oil pump. When I put the oil tank in and fill that up, that oil is not going to be able to get to the pump because it's going to be airlocked. So I'm just going to have to disconnect the pipe at this end, wait till the oil flows down, and then quickly put it back on. When we just come to start the engine for the first time, I'm probably going to mix half a litre of fuel and uh, oil to the correct ratio and run it on that first. So I'm going to have to wait until the bike is running to ensure the pump is running to ensure that. Get that out of the way. The little pipe, the oil is being pumped up to the carb so it can be taken into the engine. Now then, uh, are we going to tune this engine? 
Um, there's a couple of things that you can do. I've not, like I said about modifications, I've not gone big ball kits and all stuff like that. It's just bog standard. But there are a couple of things you can do. I've took the airbox off because I'm just going to remove this. This here is the inlet. 14 mil. And if you remove that, just that little snorkel. Twenty-two and a bit. So I've uh, very uh, certainly um, opened that up now. Would provide probably 30 40 percent more air into it. There's also something else that we can do. Yeah, on the carburetor, this little plate here with the holes in it. It's supposed to stop in inrush noise of air. That's all I can find out. Uh, but it's quite common practice to remove that altogether and um, just allow more air into it. So once it's all built, we're going to have to retune it a little bit because we're going to put let a lot more air in. So we'll probably have a bigger jet and we'll achieve some uh, some better performance. Right, we better get some tunes on and get started with this then. Yeah, tanks in, loom in, engine in, bearings, front tube. Let's go.
stop Shooting stars never stop Even when they reach the top Here goes a supernova What a pushover Shooting stars never stop Even when they reach the top There goes a supernova What a pushover To the pleasure dome Going home where lovers roam Welcome to the pleasure
Ooh, we're getting there now. It's been a long bloody day though. I'll tell you what, these little bloody things. It's either the wrong thread or just missed that little peg was missized. Poorly called cut thread. Good job I kept the old ones. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of Rupert left in there. Yeah, that uh, that was really confusing, man. Uh, right, I'm packing away. I've got all this put away. Until tomorrow, I'm going down the pub and I'll say goodbye to you there. Oh, ready for that and gather into it. Been a long day. Took much longer than, than I thought it was going to. Oh, yeah. That steering tube, the knuckle, yeah, that took me ages. It, it, not so much it's difficult, but it, the correct routing of the brake pipe. But I think we've got it sorted in the end. I look back on some old photographs and even then what weren't really clear, but yeah, there ain't much room for it there. Uh, and then right at the death, this, that Fox me the new headset bearings, the top bit, a uh, little peg there. Could have filed it a bit smaller, but you don't actually fit the groove on the tube. And then the lockdown ring, there's no bearing races or anything on that, but the thread, it's not cut very well. Cheap part, Euro scooter parts, that bearing set from. So I've still got the old ones, so they've gone on. Uh, it's not, not a moving part, and there's no bearing face, so might as well just reuse them onto. Right, so all that brings this one to an end. Uh, we're going to be back on it tomorrow and we're going to get everything buttoned up we're going to go for an engine start so get back for the next video speak to you soon Until then.